everybody get my text message? Raise your hand if you didn't get it. Raise your hand if you didn't get it and you're signed up. Okay, well, the, the, the text message just said that 3.1 was done with work. And 3.2 would be done with work. So this is 3.1, <coughs> and it's just one step equation. So it's just one thing. Um, well, I guess they can be solved by doing one thing, by right? taking one step. Okay? If, you, if you take more than one step for some reason, that's fine. Um, but you could solve it in one step. So what is one thing we could do for number 13 to get in alone, isolated, on one side? Yeah, I know. Add six to both sides. So we have uh, the number n uh, minus 6. The, the number n we want is being subtracted by 6, and the result is negative 2. If we add 6 to negative 6, negative 6 plus 6 is 0, so now we have n plus nothing. So that's good, that's just n. So if we add 6 to this side, um, it'll, ba it'll keep the equation balanced, and then we'll find out what n is worth, n is worth 4. That's it, once we get that, that letter by itself on one side, then that's it, nothing else to do. So we want to know what q is, but this is telling us that negative 4 times q, the number that we want to know, negative 4 times that number, gives us positive 52. All right. So what we want is not negative 4 times q, we would like 1 times q. So we can counteract that times negative 4. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. All right. Divide by negative 4. I'm just going to write an extra step to show us what exactly is happening here. divided by negative 4 is, what is 52 divided by 4? Here we have negative 4 over negative 4 times q over 1. That would just give us that exactly, right? To multiply straight across. That's the fraction we would get. Negative 4 by negative, negative 4 divided by negative 4 is positive 1. We get q equals negative 13. So I write down that extra step, not because I expect you to, but just to highlight exactly what's happening and to um, not just say, oh, negative 4 cancels out. <coughs> Um, maybe it's not the case with this class, but in uh, period eight, I found um, there's quite a bit of I know what to do. Right? I know I'm supposed to divide by negative four in this case, because I did some of this in pre-algebra, but not really understanding why. Right? Knowing that I'm supposed to divide by negative four, knowing that it cancels out the multiplication by negative four, but not knowing why. Okay? And uh, you can only get along so far uh, in any field, in anything that you do, without understanding what makes stuff work. And so that's what I want to do, just want to highlight that. Now number 28. So the number we want to know the value of is d. We know that if we take d and divide it by 14, then we get negative 3. We know 1 14th of the number that we want to know. Right? We're told 1 14th of it. So um, the number we want is it's four time, 14 times bigger than this number, right? This is 1 14th of it. We want something that's 14 times bigger. Uh, how do we obtain a number that's 14 times as big as that number? <laughs> multiply by 14. If we multiply by 14 over 1. Right, we, could re we could rearrange this a little bit and get uh, d over 1 times 14 over 14. Multiplication, multiplication is commutative, so we can write it that way. 14 over 14 is 1. 1 times d is just d. On this side, we'll multiply this by 14. Okay. So that's negative, uh, what is that? negative 40. Anybody 
this week up or something, I don't know. Maybe the two times four three and the same forty two. Um so what's going on over here? Should be negative. Oh, this is four. Alright, so D is negative forty two. Not a, a really super new situation, but a situation involving fractions, which we should be ready to do. And we know v plus an eighth gives us three fourths. We don't want v plus an eighth, we just want v. So how are we going to get rid of that one eighth? Yeah? Subtract one eighth. One eighth minus one eighth gives us zero. One eighth minus one eighth is zero. Zero plus v is v. So we'll subtract one eighth from this side as well. So Well, how do I do uh, three fourths minus one eighth? Okay. Subtend three fourths into something over eight. Something over eight. Mm -hmm. And what will that be over eight? Six eighths. Six eighths minus one eighth equals v. So five eighths times v. All right, so we did one, uh, maybe a couple like this in class. And a fraction now times z. Here we had uh, a whole number, or uh, an integer, let's say an integer, times uh, our, our variable, our unknown. And here we have a fraction times our unknown. So how do we uh, counteract that <coughs> multiplication by 2 thirds? Yeah, we've been moving them along after that. Five by 2 thirds? OK, great. You have. Uh, Multiplication, right? Something times z. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So if you take something and you divide it by itself, you'll get one. One times z. Right? So that works just fine. Divide by two thirds. Okay. So on this side, we know that anything divided by itself is one. So we don't really have to worry about like doing that um, that math, that operation of uh, dividing this fraction by that. But over here, we have negative four thirds divided by two thirds. So how do we go about dividing that fraction by that other fraction? Danielle? The reciprocal of what? Of two-thirds. Of two-thirds. Negative four-thirds times the reciprocal of two-thirds, which is three-halves. We'll cross-cancel if possible. If three, we'll divide this three. Three divided by three is one. Four divided by two is two. So negative two is what z is worth. <coughs> Questions from that or other parts of the homework? Other parts of 3.1? And just so that I'm not inundated with people telling me I did 3.2 and it's on my 3.1 homework, if it's on separate sheets of paper, please keep your 3.2 and hand it in later. Uh, if it's on the back or something, it's fine. I'll catch it. I'll make a note of it in the grade book so that when it's time for 3.2, I'll see that you have already turned that in. Uh, Tell me that. Last time that happened, I got told that about 50 times. That's a lot of times. So if it's already on separate sheets, keep the three point two. If they're attached and then you cannot separate them, then just go ahead and turn them both in. Yeah, but he's like... 
20. So we're going to go back and visit 3.2 and um, see if you guys seemed to do well with it. Um, and maybe you just did, but the other class uh, was struggling. So I thought maybe I just didn't catch on if you guys were struggling. So I'm just going to give you some problems to practice. I'm going to make you do them on your own. and then kind of see how you handle them. And if we're doing fine, then we'll just move right along. And if we need to spend some more time, that's what we'll do. Looks good. Um, well, I'm gonna that. Uh, the the steps that we do in this in this uh, section will be really similar to the ones we do in the next section. Right? Particularly towards the end, like the end of all these equations are gonna look really similar. Um, we're gonna do some more that are that are, are some equations today that are more complex than this. And really, like we're going to kind of add on layers to this kind of an equation. And we're going to take that, that more layered equation, that more complex equation. And this will look like we'll be towards the end of one of those equations. All right? Like a, a common couple of last steps to take. These are like the last steps you would take on an equation. Is that you've got maybe uh, a few of the variables, right? you got seven of them here, 7D. Uh, maybe plus something or minus something, and so a lot of times you'll you'll uh, counteract that that constant by adding one, getting that um, at least that term, that variable term by itself. And 70 on one side, and on this side we have 14. And almost without fail, the last step will be to uh, negate that uh, that coefficient right there. Okay. Whether it's a whole number, a uh, negative whole number, an integer, a fraction or something, usually there's something times your variable and you want to get rid of that thing, that coefficient. Right? And you could always, if there's a coefficient on your variable, you can always divide by it. We saw even when that number was a fraction, we can divide by that fraction. Bryce reminded us. We can divide by that fraction. On the other side, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, but that is essentially what we're doing. Divide both sides by seven and these two. Okay. It's gonna be a common last couple of steps. Get rid of that, that constant and then divide by that coefficient. Okay. Um, let's do about 20. Let's see how you guys do this one. Six equals negative seven and a half. Uh, plus four. This is looking good too. Uh, we have two instances of this uh, of this variable. Right? We've got two terms, two like terms is what I'm trying to say. We've got two like terms. Both of them have s in them. Okay. Can you guys stop talking, please? Thanks. Okay. So we've got these two like terms. So we can put them together into one term right, with one coefficient. 4f minus 7f, so negative 3f. And then, as we might expect, that last step, we divide that coefficient. So we get negative 2 is f. Okay. Um, <coughs> um, I'm just going to give 
this one to you. Let's say three fourths x plus um, uh, three eighths x minus two <coughs> equals. Um, let's see. a little more than, than half and half. A little more than half of you got, uh, got through this just fine. This problem is, is going to be really similar to this one right here. The fractions being a little bit of a difference and also there's a, a constant. But what we always want to do as we try to solve these equations, we want to get the variable by itself. Okay? We want to get one of the variable, one times x by itself. Um, so, for the, for the time being, right now, like in this section, um, it might not be by itself because we're adding or subtracting something to the x terms, okay? Or it might not be by itself because, you know, it might not be 1 times x. It might be something else times x. We need to counteract that. Okay. But for right now, at this step, we don't even have the x terms by themselves on one side. Even if we put them together, it's still, they won't be uh, the only things on that side. Right? We have this minus two. So that's, that's one way of looking at it. You don't have to look at it that way. But that's, that's how I'm looking at it. The x terms are not alone. They've got this minus two. So how do we negate that minus two? Daniel? You just add two, right? If we, if we take negative two and we add two, negative two plus two is zero. And we can add two over here. We get 18. In the same step, we can recognize that we've got two x terms, right? Two, uh, two like terms. Uh, and we're going to want to bring those together. We're going to want to combine like terms. And how's that going to look? How are we going to do that? Kayla? Uh, so make it over 8, so it'll be what over 8? 6 over 8 times x plus 3 over 8 times x gives us 9 eighths x. Here we have 9 eighths x equals 18. And how do we cancel out that 9 eighths? Bridger? Divide by 9 over 8. Divide by 9 over 8. 
Anytime you have a number times x, you're going to always divide it by itself. And that divided by itself is 1. That's 1 times x. That's clear. Uh, on this side, it's a little easier to multiply by 8 ninths rather than divide by 9 eighths. Right? Very equivalent. You have 9 cancels with 18. Uh, 18 divided by 9 is 2. So 2 times 8 gives us 16. x is 16. seem to do pretty well. And now we're just going to keep putting more and more steps in your way in the way of having x or z or whatever be by itself. Okay. Um, we can kind of take steps back. We can look at the, big, the beginning of this quiz where the first one, all we had to do was add a number to both sides. And we're done. Okay. Uh, or all we had to do was divide by a number on both sides. Uh, maybe fractions got involved, right? We had to divide on both sides by a fraction or multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. Uh, then to add, you know, another layer to it, to add another uh, roadblock on, on the way of getting this by itself, we not only will have to divide by seven, but before we do that, we'll have to add one to both sides. So we add one and then divide by seven. We have to combine like terms first, put them together and then divide by the coefficient. Or we're going to have to add both sides or subtract both sides, combine like terms, and divide by that coefficient. And multiply by the so we just keep adding more layers and more layers. And that's what we have in 3.3. It's called solving multi-step equations, which we might as well just call it like solving any equation, any equation that uh, they might throw at us. All right, so we're in 3.3. And um, what we're going to do is work on some we will work one with you. We'll work on it together. We'll throw ideas out there, what we can do. You'll do one by yourself. Okay, we'll do this a few times. Go back and forth. And what we'll try to construct is like a, a set of steps that we can go through. Right? It's not going to be a, a, like a concrete set of steps. That this is exactly what you have to do every time. Okay, but it will help guide you along. Right? So let's start with this guy right here. Now, I don't want you to get locked into the idea that there's something that you're supposed to do first. If there's something that you think you want to do, just make sure that you can do it. And if you can do it, if it's legal, do it. Okay. So what's a, what's an idea? What's something we could do? Step one. Combine like terms. Combine like terms. It's certainly legal to do that. All right. Still trying to get x isolated by itself on one side. So what's something we could do next? Yeah, Nathan. Add 10 to both sides. Just kind of do that mentally. Add 10 to both sides. We know that cancels out that uh, negative 10 plus 10 is 0. So all the stuff is 5x. And now what? Danielle. Divide by 5x is 6. Okay. So pretty much, no matter what your equation starts out looking like, right about here, is where most equations will, will start looking like this. Like a number of times your variable, probably plus something or minus something, right? The last two steps are going to be really similar. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to hand over to you, uh, have you work yourself, is uh, it's number 4, 3.3. It's 12b plus 14 plus 10b equals 80. Work that out. Very similar to what we just did. All right, so it's all we got there. So let's 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 say, uh, what are we going to do? Step one, and let's make step one different from the step one we did over here. So what can we do differently? Subtract fourteen. Subtract fourteen first. So we have twelve b plus ten b equals 66. And now our step two will be different, right? What will step two be? Combine like terms, we get 22v equals 66. We'll divide both sides by 22 
66 divided by 22. this one out together. What's something we could do first? What's that? Do the distributive property? Yep. Let's distribute this two. We get 2x plus 12 times 39. Okay. Well, after that one step, it's looking a lot like the thing we just did. Right? The, the equations that we just did. Find like terms. Like that's 12, that's 39. Then what? Subtract 12 from 39. Subtract 12. 9x equals 27. And by 9, x is 3. You see what they do here? Right? You see like the, the psychology behind somebody who writes these books, writes these problems. They have you add first, and they have you have to divide both sides by something, and then they put those together, and then they put in another step, that once you do that step, it just breaks it down into the problem, you know, the simpler problem that you just got done learning about. And they just added another step here, this distributive step, uh, and after you do that step, it just reverts back to a problem like we had just got done doing, and that's, Oftentimes what they do, right? They, they step you up. Just put another layer on top, another layer on top. Uh, and after doing one step, it usually goes back to being the kind of equation or problem or whatever uh, you had just learned to do. Okay. So I'm going to give you number 14. And that's 5m plus 2 times m plus 1. You. I'll see. Come around and see how you're doing. All right. So uh, looks very good. Very similar. Distribute. Uh, and then we can in, in one uh, one step we can combine like terms and subtract two on both sides. And n is three. Okay. So. Uh, I thought this was kind of interesting. I, you know, I wrote this down incorrectly. Um, and somebody said that made more sense. Okay. Now, let's, uh, let's just leave it like this. Let's leave it as 13, like the mistake I had at the beginning, and see why you know, there's a feeling like it makes more sense. So we're still going to distribute. We'll still get 5m plus 2m plus 2 equals 13. Get 7m plus 2 equals 13. Okay, I'm just highlighting the difference here. So we subtract 2. 7m equals 11, and then we divide on both sides by 7, and we get 11 over 7. Did we do this correctly? Is is m 11 over 7? It is definitely 11 over 7. But when you get an answer like 11 over 7, what does it feel like? Feels like you did something wrong, okay? Um, well, in real life, our, our answers aren't are going to even come out as nice as 11 over 7, right? I'm really applying this stuff. I'm actually using it in a, like, a physics application or something like that. Um, probably not even going to come out that nicely. Um, so we wouldn't expect all of our answers forever to always be these, these nice whole numbers, or these integers. Um, but sometimes, in, in a math book, when you're first learning this stuff, if you do get 11 over 7, you might want to go back and check your work. But if you've done everything correctly, then you know 11 over 7 is, is ugly, but correct. Okay. So um, don't feel like you're, you're definitely wrong if you get this answer, like this is the wrong answer. 
It could be the right one, it could just be not a very pretty one. Um, talked about this, I, I think it's really important to bring light to misconceptions that are common. All right. So what, what's the first step that we could take? Do the distributive problem. Like we've just done, right? I, but I've kind of corrupted your minds, right? We just did a couple problems where the distributive property, you know, was what we did. Uh, and it was a little more clear, actually, in those problems. In this one, I just want to show you what can happen sometimes, what people try and do. All right. um, was there anybody, honestly, who, who felt like at this step they could subtract three? Anybody who felt like subtracting three? Not a single person? Okay. Well, maybe in different circumstances where I had just shown you a couple of problems where we distribute. It's really common for uh, a student to want to subtract three. Because there's a three and they want to get they want to subtract it. But why doesn't that work? Why can you not subtract that three? Because it's being multiplied? Yeah. It, it, that's a simple, straight to the point answer. It's being multiplied. So to counter act that multiplication, I can't subtract. They're not in the same, they're not quite in the same realm. You can't cancel out multiplication by three by, subtr by, uh, by subtracting the three. Okay. So certainly we could distribute. We could distribute the three. We get three x minus uh, six equals six. And we could add six to both sides and get 12 and then divide by three and get x is four. Um, but here's another idea. Okay. Let me, I'll write that out. We have three x minus 6 equals 6, and then we add 6 to both sides, and then we divide by 3, right? Um, but notice we, we multiplied the 3 in, you know, to the x. We multiplied uh, 3 by x. And notice the last thing we did was to divide that very same 3 away from x, right? To cancel out that 3. Um, this is an idea where you know, you've got three times the parentheses with x in it. There's no other like terms around. Okay, so one thing we could do, uh, instead of multiplying it in and then dividing it away, just a couple steps later, how about we got three times something uh, is six. So on this side, could we just divide by three on that side without distributing it? Is that okay? Let's go here. 3 times x equals 12. Does that make sense to divide by 3 in that case? Why are we dividing by 3? If we have 3x equals 12, why are we dividing by 3? Because you're trying to get x alone. OK, trying to get x by itself. Um, and why does that get x by itself when we divide by 3 in that step? Why is x left alone when we divide by 3? What's that? 3 times? 3 divided by 3 is 1. Yeah. If we divide both sides by 3, it's really saying 3 thirds times x over 1, if you like. That's 4. 3 divided by 3 is just 1, and 1 times x is just x. That's, that's what's going on. Well, if we do that here, divide both sides by 3, we're really getting 3 over 3 times x minus 2 over 1. If we were to multiply these two fractions together straight across, that's what we would get right there. So that leaves 1 times the parentheses. And 1 times the parentheses x minus 2 is just x minus 2. If we distribute the 1 into there, we just get x minus 2 equals 2. And we add 2 on both sides, and x is 4. Don't have to do that. You don't 
have to divide by 3 on both sides, but it does save you distributing it. Um, and we do only add 2 to both sides rather than adding 6 to both sides. It makes the numbers that we have to, uh, to counteract, the numbers that we have to add and the numbers we have to divide by, a little bit easier to deal with. So um, I'm going to give you one. Try out, try out that idea. So I, I put this problem up on the board and I said, I asked you to try out that idea. What idea was I talking about? Right? When you divide by the number instead of uh, distributing. There we go. Helping each other out. Yeah, that's what I meant. I'm not saying that if you distributed it, you, you did it wrong. Okay. You still found what x was worth. But what I'm, I'm trying to show you is this other idea. It saves us the distribution. And if that distribution was a real hassle, then it would be really useful to get rid of this number before we had to distribute it. Sometimes you have to distribute, and there's nothing you can do about it. You have to do it. Okay. But the only x term is, is right there uh, in the parentheses. And so if we, if we never distribute that 5, uh, then, or if we could skip that step of distribution, then we just kind of bring out that x plus 3 from the parentheses, right? We, we negate uh, what the parentheses are doing. The purpose of these parentheses is to make sure these get multiplied by 5. But if we divide that 5 out before we start, we have a, a much simpler problem. We subtract 3 on both sides, and x is 1. So sometimes it's it's advantageous for us to uh, skip that distribution, save ourselves the, the step of having this to distribute, especially if distributing is really going to be kind of annoying. Okay. Let's look at this next problem. Very similar, but uh, but simpler. Is that negative twenty-four? It is. It's a negative twenty-four. <coughs> if we were to go with the uh, the standard first step uh, that most people would uh, try and do here, we would distribute. Now, what do you think about distributing that three halves? Like, uh, is it fun or not fun? Easier, or there's easier things to do. Okay. So if we didn't have to distribute that three halves, that'd probably save us some time, maybe a couple of steps. Right? Could we do that? Could we not distribute that three halves? Could we, could we approach this differently? How so? Yes. We 
did it the, the, the last ones, right? We divided by five. We divided by three here. Well, here. We divided by three first. So divide by three halves. And what's three halves divided by three halves? One. That's just the one. And what's one times three x plus five? Fine, right? When I say one times, you should pay attention to what I'm about to say because you're just going to repeat it. Right? One times 3x plus 5 is 3x plus 5. It doesn't change a thing. 3x plus 5. Okay, so we did that on that side. We've got to balance it out, do it on the other side. We're going to divide this by 3 halves. Okay? Dividing by 3 halves is kind of... We haven't actually even divided by fractions, have we? Have you ever divided by a fraction? Have you set up a long division problem or something and divided by a fraction? No, we always... What, what do we do instead of dividing by a fraction? Multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. So div don't divide by 3 halves. Do the equivalent, multiply by 2 thirds. Okay, so negative 24 over 1 times 2 over 3. Um, and now 24 is divisible by 3. We divide 24 by 3. Uh, now negative 24 becomes negative uh, 6. What? Oh, 3, sorry. 8. Negative 8. Negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. And that's, that turns out to be kind of nice. If we were to distribute that, that 2 thirds or that 3 halves into the parentheses, we get a whole mess of uh, fractions that we'd have to deal with. We'd have to wind up uh, subtracting a fraction on both sides, and we have to divide by a fraction. And uh, there would probably be common denominators that have to get involved. But now that we divide by that fraction on both sides and, and we don't distribute it in, um, it turns out, it works out nicely, there are no more fractions. It's all uh, integers. So we subtract 5 on both sides, we get 11. x equals, uh, or that's negative 16, sorry. We get negative uh, uh, 21. Negative 21. And it looks like a sad thing. And negative 21 divided by 3 is negative 7. One time a professor told me, he taught middle school, and he, he said that he uh, would throw candy to students who found his mistakes. But I think I would, I would lose a lot of money in candy if I started doing that. I'd have to get better. It's a bad day for mistakes. OK. Um, now I'm going to give you a similar problem, and I want you to handle it with poise and grace. Poise, not poison. In case you know, not toys. Poise is what I'm saying. At times, there are times when you're just going to have to distribute a, a fraction. It's going to happen. Okay? It's just going to be the way that it is. Um, you have to deal with messy numbers. But sometimes we can avoid that. Sometimes we can save ourselves that step of messing with a, a gross fraction. Okay. So if you're distributing this 8 sevenths in here, that's fine. And if you are, are careful and you make sure that you uh, do everything correctly, It'll all come out the same in the end. But uh, I am just, my, my commercial for this would be it makes it a little bit easier if you save yourself that step. So divide on both sides by 8 sevenths or distribute the 8 sevenths. It's up to you what you feel like you want to do. I would divide by the 8 sevenths or, or multiply by 7 eighths on both sides. 32 over 1 times 7 eighths. On this side, we just wind up with 3w minus 1. 32, this is a negative, uh, a negative 4. And a negative 4 times a 7 is negative 28. 3w minus 1, add 1 on both sides, negative 27 equals 3w, divide by w on both sides, negative 9 equals w. How's that? Oh, you're like you're proud of yourself.
Okay. So, as I said from the beginning, notice your last couple of steps, almost always the same. Those last couple of steps, uh, there's the last couple of steps here. Uh, let's see, this is uh, convenient. Last step is just subtract three on both sides. Uh, convenient as well, just add two on both sides. Uh, here we go, if we distribute this, our last two steps, add six, divide by three, very similar. You can go back and look at all these. Our last two steps typically are those, those two. Add or subtract something to both sides, like subtract two on both sides, and then divide by whatever the coefficient of your variable is. So I would say those are the pretty dependable last two steps. Okay. They're not, th those two aren't even for sure because you won't always have to divide by uh, something. Right? In this case, when we subtract from 3, it was done because then it just left x by itself. Okay. But those last two steps, okay, go with last step, we're often going to divide by the coefficient. Last step a lot of times looks like 7x equals 21, divide by 7 on both sides. 5x equals 25, divide by 5 on both sides. Step just before that, okay, so second to last, okay. What typically comes just before that, just before you're dividing by the coefficient. Step comes before that a lot of times. Adding or subtracting are constant, right? So you can add, subtract, whatever the situation calls for. Add or subtract uh, a constant. And if you got x plus 2, you subtract 2. If you got x minus 5, you add 5 to both sides. Okay? It's when we get to the step before that, it can get really, you know, not predictable. The step before that might be. Um, to distribute. Maybe you distribute just before that. Or maybe just before that you uh, collected like terms. Um, maybe just before that you did something else, right? It starts to get a little bit fuzzy. We're not sure exactly what step one will look like every time. Okay, I can't offer you that. Um, the, the strategy though, what will always be Wherever your variables are, get them in one place on one side. Okay? If they're already on one side together, great. Put them together. If they're not on one side together, get them on the same side together. Collect like terms. Get the constants away. Right? So add or subtract the constant. Add or subtract the constant away, and then divide by the coefficient. Right? Step before this might be looking like collect like terms, or it might look like distribute, or it might look like uh, any number of things. Okay, it might look like uh, don't distribute. Divide by that number that you're supposed to distribute. It looks like you're, you're wanting to distribute. Steps before this vary by a lot. Even these vary a little bit, but these are pretty dependable. Okay. So before this, you can just take all the steps, whatever they look like. We're gonna say get all the variable terms together. Get them all together. If you've gotten them all together, if you, if you have gone through that strategy, you've got them all together, then you'll wind up somewhere here. Maybe you collected one terms and now you've got 7x plus 2 equals 23, whatever. And then you add or subtract the constant, divide by the coefficient. I know that as math students, we like to have those steps, but it just doesn't always have the same exact steps. So get the variable terms together, add or subtract the constant, divide by the coefficient. Okay, well that, I think that's 
That's all I have for you. And all that's left is practicing. Okay. The situations are all going to be very similar. Maybe there'll be fractions. Maybe there's going to be uh, maybe there's going to be decimals <coughs> to deal with. But it's all going to be pretty similar. Okay. So today's three two and three three.